Hi, this is Peter Hart. Welcome back to FAIR TV. The ongoing crisis in North Korea is obviously the top story of the week. While it goes without saying that we can't know for sure what's happening inside that country, we can get a good look at how the U.S. media are handling this story. CNN's coverage is already in the retired general plots out war game scenarios on a fancy map stage. The overarching theme is that North Korea is belligerently rattling sabers, a narrative that obscures or diminishes the U.S. role in this. Take this clip from CBS. North Korean saber rattling is common every spring when the United States and South Korea engage in military exercises. The message is pretty clear in the language they're using there and elsewhere. North Korea are the ones making threats, though many experts are confident that they don't have the weapons to match the rhetoric. But as some analysts have pointed out, when the world's superpower is conducting massive military exercises on your border, some of which involve nuclear-capable bombers, well, that could be unnerving. But much of the U.S. media coverage talks about U.S. actions as responses to North Korean provocations. The message is that North Korea is ready to strike. North Korea's military declared today it had, quote, final approval to launch merciless strikes on the United States, including the use of nuclear weapons, possibly within days. Now, some experts have cautioned that rhetoric such as that is mostly about what North Korea says it would do if it were attacked. Unfortunately, that kind of context and caution is missing from much of U.S. media. Anyone who hoped that the massacre of schoolchildren in Newtown, Connecticut might lead to some changes in the country's gun laws can't be happy about how Congress is handling this issue. But to hear some in the media tell it, it's the public that has changed its mind. On Meet the Press on March 31st, Chuck Todd explained that support for stricter gun laws is slipping. The polls are sort of speaking pretty loud here, is what he said. And he wasn't the only one. Here's another Sunday show, ABC's This Week. Yeah, look at the latest poll from CBS. Support for gun control in December of 2012, 57% for new gun control laws, stricter gun control laws, now down to 47 percent. Citing that one CBS poll is a curious decision. ABC has its own poll, which found little change since Newtown, and NBC has a gun poll in late February that showed support for stricter gun laws has been increasing since the Newtown massacre. And on specific policies, like expanded background checks, the public is overwhelmingly supportive. It's certainly likely that Congress will not reflect the public's view on gun laws. The state of negotiations in Washington suggests that even popular policy changes might not become law. But reporters shouldn't blame that fact on the public. And finally, are you still jittery about the state of the economy? No worries. The March 29th front page of USA Today announced, we're feeling rich again. And the news does sound good, at least the way reporter Paul Davidson explains it. The stock market's record-setting rally has helped U.S. households recover all of the wealth they lost in the Great Recession, prompting many Americans to open their wallets and shrug off a recent payroll tax hike. Huh. Well, who is we, exactly? Is it everyone, or is it many Americans? The piece tells us that the S&P stock index broke a record, just like the Dow had. Home prices are creeping up 9% from their low point. That doesn't sound like a lot. But you finally get a dose of reality by reading all the way down to the second to the last paragraph. And that's where USA Today decides to tell us that most of this recovered wealth comes in the form of stock value. And, well, only about 10% of households have significant stock holdings. So instead of talking about many households, the paper should have said not very many. Household wealth is rebounding, mostly because of the stock market, which means little to nothing to the vast majority of us. But I guess we're still feeling rich, right? I'm Peter Hart. This was FAIR TV. Thanks for tuning in.